I think I've always kind of been uh, anti-authority. I remember not wanting to be told what to do as young as I can remember. I've always been willing to take risks for freedom. And uh, if you're gonna go down, go down fighting. Any cryptocurrency is a really good way of saying fuck the system. There was no money stolen. The only thing that they say makes it fraud is that we didn't tell the banks that we were buying and selling Bitcoin. So the FBI raided my house and four other people's houses. They kicked down my door, pointed guns at me, and threatened to shoot me. The activists came up with the name The Crypto Six. I wanted to see an end to government monopolies and monopolies on money to help empower the individual, to undermine the central banks and the central so-called authorities, and that Bitcoin is the best tool that we've had in our lifetimes and in generations uh, to do that. Free Talk Live. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. Welcome to the program where you can take control of the airwaves, bring up whatever's on your mind. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian and Chris. Maybe you've heard that Bitcoin just hit a record high earlier this week, just I think two days ago at so this like point. 66,000 was it? Yeah, it was almost 67. Almost 67. 67. Okay. And just ma almost made it there. Yeah, we could be at 100 by the end of the year. I mean, that is. I'm crossing my fingers. I've got a good group here. There's more coming up. You can join us on Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. We're not specifically a crypto show, but we are the show that brings crypto to the masses in a way. And we're huge cryptocurrency fans. We're users of cryptocurrency. To me, Bitcoin is a mission of peace. So we started the vending machine. This little thing, you can just set it on a countertop where they can come seven days a week, put cash into this machine and get Bitcoin out. The machines had a hot wallet with actual Bitcoin that the machines had control over that was not coming from, you know, we weren't, we're not placing orders on an exchange. So it really is like a candy vending machine where you put money in and you get product out and there's no in between. It's just buyer, seller. Now that value that they've created cannot be taxed by the government unless you tell them about it. Uh, and it cannot be stolen by them. Banking Commission knew about our Bitcoin vending machine. I never asked them permission because I don't operate that way. I don't ask people for permission for what should be my right to do. So I figured at some point something would happen. In fact, right now, I will not ask you again. In key. The U.S. Attorney's Office says six people were indicted by a federal grand jury in New Hampshire and charged with participating in a conspiracy to operate an unlicensed money transmitting business. They have been identified as Colleen Fordham of Alstead, Renee Spinella, Andrew Spinella, Ian Freeman of Keene, Aria DeMezzo of Keene, and a person named Nobody. So the FBI raided my house and four other people's houses on uh, March 16th. There were probably somewhere between three or four or five dozen uh, armed agents here. At six in the morning, the, the police rolled up here onto the, I think they came right up here, and there was a battering ram on the front of their tank, which is called a Bearcat, that they busted this front door in with. So they smashed in this window here, which is right in the front of the studio. So there's broken glass all over the inside of the entryway here. I could see there were armed men uh, standing outside shouting at me to come down the stairs with my hands up. I was arrested. Back up, you're not allowed in this area. They took me away. I spent 69 days behind bars. Hey! How do you feel? Let's get out of this place. Yeah! <laughs> They've charged me with unlicensed money transmission, conspiracy to commit money transmission, multiple counts of wire fraud, one charge of money laundering, then there's a charge of continuing financial crimes enterprise. And that charge alone, that one charge, has a 10-year minimum sentence.
the FBI would say that people got taken advantage of and they got, uh, you know, scam artists took advantage of them and they bought Bitcoin from Ian Freeman and his friends and, and he enabled that. So you add up all the time, I could be spending the rest of my life in prison over this. Okay. All right, coconut, let's go. Coconut, we can't go that way. Sadly, uh, my bail conditions are very restrictive. I can't leave the house without permission from the government. This is the box that has a cell phone transmitter in it and it connects to this. So if I go more than 100 feet away, this goes into the range error mode and then they would alert my probation officer that I have left the house without permission. Ian is one of the most dedicated activists I've ever known. He never stops working for liberty. I'm the nobody formerly known as Rich Paul. I changed my name to nobody to run for governor. Basically, I wanted to do the job like nobody was doing it. My slogan was, nobody knows how to live your life better than you do, and nobody deserves that kind of power. <laughs> I'm charged with conspiracy to operate an unlicensed money transmitting business. Um, and I'm charged with four counts of wire fraud. And although they call it fraud, there was no money stolen. The only, th the only thing that they say makes it fraud is that we didn't tell the banks that we were buying and selling Bitcoin. I've been wanting to get out of the dollar for a long time. You know, we don't have to live our lives on blood money. And really, the dollar is blood money. Basically, the only way to buy oil on the world market is to pay for it in dollars. And that's the primary reason. All the wars are fought on behalf of the banks. The more people who use Bitcoin, the less power the government will have, and the more people will see that they don't need the government. This one's kind of cool. There's little Bitcoin icons on this map that show crypto accepting businesses here in Keene. You can see the Bitcoin embassy here. There's uh, another Bitcoin icon here, here, and here, and so there's like, several businesses. Uh... Keene is known as the crypto mecca because it has the highest number of cryptocurrency accepting businesses per capita of anywhere in the world. I could eat at a different restaurant every single day of the week and use cryptocurrency every single day. Just down this street right here, there is an Indian place that accepts cryptocurrency. And I think there's another place down there. I would estimate that it's about one shop for every thousand people that accepts cryptocurrency as payment. Like this one here, fucking great. Uh, hi again. You can just come in here, place your order, and scan a QR code, and there you go. I get random people coming in and paying with crypto, and it's really funny because I can always tell when they are going to ask because they look very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> they feel like they're doing something wrong. Cryptocurrency as a whole is a way of giving the middle finger to the system. You know, governments are slow to react. They, they still haven't gotten around to regulating Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency world is now dealing with Monero and Hush and Zcash and Horizon and all of these other privacy coins. And the government is, is still trying to figure out Bitcoin. There was a very narrow window where they could have actually controlled cryptocurrency. That ship sailed a long time ago. Now, now decentralization is too big. There's nothing they can do about it at this point. I don't know if you have the gas uh, lines at your house. Yeah, we, we don't have gas all out in West Keene. Anyway, the dude that comes in to turn the gas back on today and like relight the, the burner, uh, he goes, hey man, are you one of the Crypto Six? <laughs> <laughs> Government oh, yeah. guys are all about control. They're all about power and they need to have that control. And crypto takes that out of their hands. And it's so important what Satoshi Nakamoto did because he literally took the power of money I mean, this is, you know, the most important thing to have control over. 
He's taken it out of their hands and put it in the hands of the individual. And there's nothing the governments of the world can do about it. They can stamp their feet, they can you know, put some people in jail, and they can threaten and they can try to regulate, but ultimately they won't be able to stop cryptocurrency.